Hello everyone, so today we're going to be taking a look at how to make this Fusion 360 challenge of the month. Um, it says July, but I don't know what year it is, but this is the drawing right here. Um, so it's pretty simple, it's just a flat sketch with a thickness of 0 0.1, um, but we're actually going to uh, multiply all the dimensions here, except for the angles, by 100, just so that's easier to deal with. So 0 0.80 would just be 80, and the thickness 0 0.1 would just be uh, 10. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to start with a sketch on the base plane right here. And my starting spot, I'm probably going to start, I'm probably going to start this arc right here because it has a center and I can do a center point arc. And then I'll branch off like this and finish off with the four circles in the middle. So I'm going to create arc, uh, center point arc, so I can place my center point. I know it's a 180 degrees. Um, let's check how what the radius is. Okay, so it's 0 0.32, so we're going to multiply by 100. And just for simplicity's sake, it'll be 32. 32, we're going to draw it around like this. And click again. And we have our arc. Why is it sideways? Okay. All right, continuing on. So I'm going to go with this line next since it's easily labeled right here. We can see this line over here, 0 0.8. So multiply 100, it's 80. 80 right here. Okay, and there's no tangent constraint. So I'm going to add that tangent, this with this. Okay, now it's here. Everything turns black. That's good. We have the dimension correct. All right. Um, okay, so we have another line here. We don't know the length exactly, but we do know the angle which it's at. So let's draw another line here. And right here, we can type in the degrees by hitting tab to edit the degrees. And then we can change the length. I'm just going to put it approximately here because I don't know what the actual length is. Okay, and then we have an arc. Uh, actually, we'll come back to this later. Let's go over here. And so we do have a line, so I'm just going to draw this line. I don't know exactly how much it is. You can do like the math from the center over here, subtract the radius, and then add this part in. But I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to draw draw a line approximately the length, and then we'll come back to it later. Okay, so automatically added the tangent constraint, so I don't have to do that again. Okay, let's see. So then after this line, we have this arc over here, so I'm just going to draw the arc, draw in the arc. Uh, this time I'm going to use a three-point arc. Uh, so something like this. And then a line over here. And I notice that this line right here is parallel to this line over here. So I'm going to put a constraint on that when I get the chance. Oops. So line over here. And I'm going to go parallel. This is the parallel constraint. Click it. Click my first line. Click my second line. Now they're parallel. This icon is here. And that's good. Okay. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so this arc right here. Um, you have to look a bit closely. So all the arcs in this drawing, they have like a plus sign at their center. So this arc over here, plus sign over here. Arc over here. There's a plus over here uh, for this arc, right? So this arc's center is actually over here. Right, it's a bit hard to tell, but that's what this. Uh, there's nowhere else it can be. So, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go off of that, and we're going to do a center point arc. Uh, actually, we are not going to do center point. We're just gonna do a three point arc connecting this, to this part right here, and just estimate like that. But we know that this center needs to go over here, so we can do a coincident constraint. Click on this point and click on this point. That'll make it like this. That's fine right now. And if we look at the drawing again, uh, see, we can label some, some more stuff now. Let's see, this, the radius of this arc is 20. Let's go D for dimension and label it 20. Okay. And one more thing that you have to notice is that this right here is on the same line. This center point is on the same line as this edge. So we do a coincident constraint. 
this point and this line right here. Boom. Okay, so now this point is on the same line. Okay, continuing on. Okay, so we do have a dimension over here, 0 0.4. And notice, or sorry, this is 40. Notice that uh, we can only put this dimension over here because these two lines are parallel. If these two lines, this one and this one, were not parallel, we can't put a dimension on it. So it has to be parallel in order for us to put a dimension. So we know that from here to here, here to here is 40. Okay. And then we have this right here, a radius of 130. So I'm going to type that in. So D right here, 130. Okay, there we go. It's getting a bit better. So something over here, this is not constrained. So let's take a look. If, I, if you don't know what it's like, what's not constrained, you can try moving it around. And then, okay, I can see that this distance right here is somehow not constrained. So let's take a look. Okay, so we do see that the center point of this arc is 0 0.72 or 72 um, away from this point right here. Right, this is where the arc becomes a flat line. So we're going to dimension that. So, oops, from this point right here to this point over here, that is 70, right? Okay, there we go. So that is the outside done. This radius can go over here. Just organizing my dimensions so it's easier to look at. So now we're going to work on the small, the four small circles. Pretty straightforward, right? Start with just making four circles, just so that we can have them and work them. And they're all ten. Um, they're all ten uh, millimeters in diameter. So some special things that we can notice is that they're all on the same line over here. The two middle circles are on a straight horizontal line. The two vertical ones are also on a vertical line. Okay, so we can do we can dimension that first by using a horizontal constraint and a vertical constraint. So the horizontal and vertical constraint doesn't just have to be a line. It can be um, constrained on two points. So for example, if I want to choose this point and this point and click horizontal vertical, I can choose this point over here and this point over here. So then both of them are, if you connect their, the points up with a line, that line would be horizontal. And so that's how it works. It's the same thing with this one. If you connect up the line with um, these two uh, center points right here, it'd be vertical. And so now if I try to move it, both of them will move at the same time. So now it's constrained this way. All we need to do is make sure that these circles are centered to these circles and they're, all four of them are placed in the correct place. Okay, so let's take a look at the drawing again. And notice over here, the centers of these two circles are 30 uh, millimeters apart. Right? So I'm going to dimension that first. Pretty straightforward. Dimension, I'm going to click the two center points. And now I'm going to get my dimension, type in 30. So now this distance is set correctly. Okay, and so the height, I want to find out, do the same thing for the vertical, uh, vertically. Let's take a look over here. Distance is 0 0.4 or 40. So same thing, this dot and this dot. We're gonna do 40. Okay, so now they're all spaced apart correctly, but they somehow need to be um, uh, attached to each other properly. But before that, I'm actually going to constrain this up and down so it doesn't move anymore. Uh, so we do know that this is centered along this center right here, uh, right next to the center. So we're going to do Uh, let's see, we are actually going to draw a construction line. So from this construction line, we're going to be able to, oops, we can make this construction. So we can use this construction line and we can make it coincident with this point right here. And by doing that, this line is always on top of this point. Well, like if it, the line extends into infinity e either way, this line is on top of this point right here. So. Can see it doesn't move up or down it can only move left and right okay so that's good 
And for this one, we need to do the same thing. So because this one can't move up or down, we're just going to draw another construction line from over here to over here. Uh, let's make a construction. And now I'm going to just center the center of this line onto this line. And so that'll do two things. So, okay, actually we have a constraint called the midpoint constraint. This constraint basically uh, connects either a point um, to another line's midpoint or the midpoint of one line to the midpoint of another line. So in this case, it's the midpoint of this line to the midpoint of this line. So I click these two, the midpoints will lock together and this triangle thing will appear. So now they're all locked together and I can only shift both of them left and right. You just need to figure out how far um, how far away or which where, where I should place it now. Okay, so let's take a look at the drawing. So we can see that this point right here, the center of the vertical or the bottom circle right here is 30 millimeters away from this point over here. So I just do a simple dimension and that should be it. D right here, away from this point vertically and this is 30. Okay, so now everything's turned black. I know everything's fully constrained. If I try to move it, nothing can move. That's good. Okay, and that's it. And all I have to do now is extrude it to 10, 10 millimeters. So E, extrude this 10, and that's it. And I'm actually gonna change my visual style to visible edges. There we go. And that's the Fusion 360 challenge for July. Thanks for watching.